I'd like to welcome Murray Bartram and Marita Morgan, who we're going to talk to today. Murray and Marita are committee members of the Cerebral Palsy Sports and Recreation Association Committee, of which I also sit on, and um, they're involved with the Community Tennis Program, and they're also um, athletes themselves in the past and the present, and um, very keen sports people. So I'm just going to have a bit of a chat today about how you've been managing in COVID and um, some of your thoughts on you know, how that's affected physical activity, participation and, and what sorts of things you've been doing in during COVID to stay active and help others be active. So um, over to you, perhaps, Marita, first of all. Um, so during COVID, it's been a bit of a challenge, as we all know, but to keep active has been very important um, for me. So to keep active, I've actually been playing wheelchair tennis three to four times a week um, with friends, but also with the coaches at City Community Tennis. I have also been um, walking each morning to keep active. And I've also been involved in um, some online physio training sessions through telehealth. And I've also been um, involved in uh, recently because of the easing of restrictions, face-to-face -face physio appointments and personal training appointments as well. So I've been very fortunate that I've actually been able to get out of the house and still be very active. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Mm, well, that's really that's really amazing and quite a few online things by the sound of it. Yeah, so we, we, so we've also, because our adaptive tennis program has been stopped since July, so we've actually had some online sessions as well where we, some of us have caught up and we've had one or two coaches do some online sessions with us um, in those sessions as well. So. And is that with the with the athletes that normally come to your centre? Yes, yeah. Usually about ten of us that get together. So it was probably about six of us that got online a few times. Um, and then more recently, last so the last six weeks or so, because some people have been able to come from to the centre to play. There's, we've also had the opportunity to getting together and having shared lessons and things like that as well. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Um, and how about you, Murray? You, Murray, because I know that you're a very active person yourself. How has COVID affected your uh, levels of activity? Um, before it dropped to a five kilometre zone, I was mountain biking, surfing, um, walking, just doing a lot of stuff. And once I couldn't get to the beach, I couldn't get to many game. <clears throat> it was a lot more I walk around the local area. Um, also. Due to COVID, I picked up tennis, which is quite an addictive sport and something to uh, something to occupied. So it's been really good over the last eighteen months. But um, yeah, because I, I've actually I, I've been at home for eighteen months now from the office, so <clears throat> and I quite often get a bit of back trouble. So keeping keeping walking most days is probably the main thing I try and do. But definitely trying to ride, you know, a couple times a week and play tennis and. Just generally just keep active, which is something I've basically done my whole life. So Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. And and have you heard of any other people um of, you know different ideas of what other people have been getting up to in terms of um trying to keep active? Yeah, I mean I think people who are yeah, you know, more of the elite um sport people have you know built home gyms and done all other bits of pieces, but but even just some um, uh, friends of ours who are not as high level, but they're still, you know, really for their mental health more than anything, you can see how important sport is to them. They've made every effort they could to, you know, try and make, make it work or sometimes even apply for exemptions to actually go and play tennis or, or go and do this or do that because it is a huge part of especially somebody with a disability. Mental health is a... Um, is a massive part of life. And when you're stuck at home and you can't do anything, it's uh, probably worse than, you know, other people sometimes. Yes, as you say, because of your disability, if you don't keep up that level of activity, it can actually really, um, you know, make the effects of your disability quite a bit worse. Yeah, definitely. Like, it's... um, That's why, for me, I, got, uh, I injured my back many, many years ago. I noticed it uh, the first probably... Two months at home because 
before COVID, I used to walk to and from work. So that was 12,000 steps a day without even thinking about it. So as soon as I stopped that, within a month, my back would seize up pretty quickly. So I made sure I got my back into walking, you know, three or four times a week and then started doing tennis and a couple of other things, which kept me moving. And I'm probably, probably at the moment, I'm probably the most active I've been in the whole 18 months. Ironically, even though we're still at the 5K limit, but yeah. Yeah, it's taken, as, as you've found each new activity to to explore during the lockdown. Yeah, that is, you know, that's been some of the positives about it is you start to enjoy the, the smaller things of life. And, um, you know, even we're very, we're very lucky in the area we're living in, some of the walking around here is just, you know, world class. So, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. And what about back to you, Marisha? Um, have you come across some other people that you have connections with that have had any other sort of activities they've come across during the lockdown or different ways that people have kept active? Yeah, so I've got a, um, a close friend of mine who's got um, quite severe cerebral palsy and so she actually got involved in more Pilates in the park. So she was a, so and she used to do a little bit of that pre-COVID, but she was saying to me that doing Pilates in the park um, with a support worker has been one of the best things that she's discovered. So she's been doing Pilates in the park. Um, I've had a, a few other friends that can't come to tennis. One has actually um, taken up bike riding, decided to learn how to ride a bike in their local area. So I think most people that I know are trying to find ways that they can to get out there and enjoy it. Um, with the swimming pools being closed and, you know, winter, having winter, it's been really challenging not even to go for a swim. So I've got a couple of friends of mine that were active swimmers and they couldn't do swimming. So they've just, you know, taken up other sports and found other ways to, you know, go out in the community. But I think most people that I know that try who can try and walk, who can walk a bit have been discovering some local area walks. Um, so, yeah. And do you think people have been able to utilise, um, say, when you're saying that your friend was using a support worker, to do the Pilates, has that been through NDIS plans and things that people are involved yeah. with um, physical activity and so, recreation opportunities? Yeah, so she um, so she was very fortunate that there was a um, woman in her street that was actually a registered NDIS provider and she was um she suggested why don't we get a plan get a program from your from you know your physio and a Pilates teacher and then we can go out and do it in the park and she uses her um core supports to do that through community um, participation. So that's how she uses it um, for her plan. So, yeah, so it was through her NDIS. Um, and as she was lucky that the person lived very close so she could meet with the one-on-one -on -one, um, rule that was in place. Mm, yeah, and I think that's been great outdoors. At least that there's that opportunity for people that have personal trainers or, um, yeah, already involved in small groups. To still do that within yeah. some school, depending on uh, which area they live in. <laughs> exactly, and another friend of mine, um, he got it. He got an exemption because um, he couldn't he couldn't play tennis at a, at his local tennis center because the coach wasn't qualified. So he used his he was able to get an exemption with the doctor and with the NDIS. Very fortunate to um, come in for his tennis, but he would do an hour of tennis and then he would actually go for a walk around the park. Um, as well, so he would sort of make it an extended two hours, so that he was out of the house doing things um, as well. So being creative, I guess, with his funding during COVID to get him more active and get him out of ha the house. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested with tennis because when, like, you guys have been involved with wheelchair tennis, and like I know the centre you're working at, you you sort of have wheelchairs available. If people are in their local areas, do most would most tennis centres actually? just allow you to arrive in your wheelchair and play or is there actually a lot more to it than that? Um, there's a lot more to it than that. If it's a hard court tennis court and you've got your own tennis chair, yes, you can, you know, out of courtesy, you let them know that you're coming with your wheelchair. But if you, if your local courts are like thin grass or clay, then it's, you, um, it's harder because not all tennis centres will um, allow for sports chairs to go on to the um, to the courts. So, and I guess that's one of the reasons why, because we've got about eight wheelchairs located at Alexandria Park Tennis Courts. 
So I think um, we were able to write a letter saying that we've got tennis chairs on site for people to use if they want to come. So we had people that don't even play tennis at our tennis center reach out um, to use some of those sports chairs. So, but yeah, but so if it's a hard court tennis center and, you know, um, I know I've been down to wake first halfway with my chair and just took the court and went on. And when someone was there, I just said, oh, is it okay? Oh yeah, no problem. Can I help you? So, um, and then I know another young girl that's out at Parramatta and she went with her mother to the local tennis courts and it was thin grass and she couldn't push very well in it, but at least they were hitting the ball over the net and getting out of the house and saying, you know, but they had to write beforehand and say, is it okay for us to use a sports chair mm. on the court? So. And have you been doing much bike riding, Murray, or is mainly walking? Actually, so I've ridden a bike my entire life. I kind of rode a bike before I could walk. Um, and I've been mountain biking for probably about 16, 17 years. And mountain bikes have completely changed technology wise in the last 10. Due to COVID, I kind of slightly did the bullet and bought a, a, an e mountain bike. So it's got a, a bit of assistance with, with the way you ride. Now, it took me a while to get my head around because I was. Uh, there's a bit of the community, the mountain bike community, is a bit divided about the, as a device. But well, one of the, uh, so I read a lot when I was like 15 to about 22, and then I stopped for a few years, and then I a bit longer and stopped for a few years because it got to a point where I couldn't, I just couldn't keep up with a lot of my mates. So uh, this was kind of a tool which I thought, you know what, for once I'm going to do this and see how much it opens up my riding and it's. It's completely like I, 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 I rode from home on Monday and did a 40k loop all the way up to many damn home and the damn all the way home. And like, you still get a lot of people think, oh, you still got a lot of work. You still get a lot of exercise out of it. But it means for me in particular, when I do get tired, I can put on the e um, put on the e bike and it just helps me get home safely and I'm not going to hurt myself. Yeah. So that's actually been a tool which. It's completely changed my life, actually. Um, and yeah, but other than that, yeah, I've been riding in the local area um, on different bikes, and yeah, it's riding such a it's such a simple thing, but it's something that it's always been really good for my body, good for health, but really good for my mental health as well. It's crazy, crazy how some days you know I'll go for a ride and come back a whole different person, and, and if I don't ride for a week or two, I. I definitely noticed it actually when I do go out. It's just, I don't know, it's just a freedom for me. Yeah. All right. Actually, I was just wondering, um, Marita and Murray, but maybe switch to you first, Marita. Now, COVID uh, restrictions are about to lift somewhat. Um, have you got any thoughts on how people are going to get back into their sort of previous levels of physical activity and sort of transition from lockdown into a bit more open uh, access? I think a lot of people are quite excited that they'll be able to get back into um, into the sport that they enjoy or their activity and get away from the um, online telehealth, um, being able to see their trainers again. So um, I know at City Community Tennis, we've actually um, just yeah, um, today actually communicated with our players and said, would you, you know, are you going to come, come back to the court? So we've actually decided to start back with shared lessons to people on a court. So... That's been really, really popular um, responses. I was really surprised how. So getting back to people on a court. Um, also, um, some some other people that I know that they've reached out and asked just to do a community day of tennis. So we've looked at that, that we just have a few people get together in maximum group of, um, I think it's 20 once restrictions ease. So we can have some people to get on the tennis courts and just have some community fun days. So just you know, getting together, having barbecue and just in a in COVID safe manner, get back on the court. Um, I think also um, another way that people will do it is with the swimming pools opening up, I think um, some people will be reaching out to go and do some swimming. I've got a couple of my friends that have that have already said that they would like to jump back in the pool. So I think with restrictions easing, um, people will get outside a bit more. And then um, also for me personally, um, I'm looking forward 
to getting back into the ocean and going for a swim when my when the restrictions ease so I can actually go to the local beach and go for a swim. I've already had a few friends reach out to me that would like to go um, to Collaroy, um, just get their floaties out and have a go in the swimming pool. So I think that's how um, I'll go about it. And, I, and then, as I said, from our tennis point of view, we will um, be doing some common try days and some fun community days. Sounds great. Mary, did you have anything else to add? Uh, any other oh, things? yeah. I, I think the, the disability sport and community will be a little bit more cautious than probably some of the other uh, kind of governing bodies, I guess, which completely makes sense. So I think some things will probably may not come back as quick as other things, but I think participants will be definitely keen to get more involved in some capacity uh, in, into the, back into the COVID normal world of sport, definitely. Yeah, and I think, I mean, children haven't been at school either and they'll be going back to school as well, so they'll probably be wanting to get into their after-school activities and things like that, um, as you say, like weekend sort of uh, more social activities as well. And tying that in. Yeah, and I think... Yeah, and I know I know we've there's a few young kids with um, disabilities they are looking forward to just one of them said, even if I have one friend with me to do an activity, so just easing back into it as well. But um, so, yeah. All right, no, that's great. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for your insights. And uh, it's really positive to hear that people are still keeping active and um, hopefully giving some people some ideas of uh, just keeping active and getting back into activities once we open up. So, uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you.